Paul's epistle to the Galatians was written to defend his side of a controversy that divided the early church. Uh, on one side was the Apostle Paul, which, who preached a message of grace, a message of salvation through faith in Christ alone. Uh, the message of Paul could be summed up best by quoting from Acts chapter 16, uh, Paul and Silas had been thrown into prison and God sent an earthquake and opened the prison and the jailer was about to kill himself and Paul said, do yourself no harm for we're all still here. And the jailer, shaken and disturbed, said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He asked him a very simple question, what must I do to be saved? And Paul's answer was in Acts 16.31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Period. And he didn't add anything else. He didn't tell him about the Old Testament law. He didn't tell him you need to be circumcised or observe the Sabbath day or keep the food laws or go to the temple three times a year. He didn't tell him anything about the Old Testament laws. He simply said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. On the other side were Jewish Christians who believed it was necessary to not only believe in Jesus, but to also observe the Old Testament law. In Acts chapter 15, verse 1 says this, this is the message of the Jewish Christians who believed it was necessary to observe the law. The other side of the controversy Paul is um, uh, defending his position uh, against in Galatians. The Pharisees which believed uh, in Acts 15.1 said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And in Acts chapter 15 Verse 5, they said, It is necessary to circumcise the Gentile believers and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So what's happening in the epistle to the Galatians is this. Paul had founded a church in the city of Antioch of Gentile believers who were Christians and their salvation and their Christianity was based on the message of Paul, which was the message of grace, which we could sum up this way. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. However, the church in Jerusalem, emissaries from Peter, James, and John, the elders of the church in Jerusalem, came to Antioch and told the Christians that you must observe the law of Moses and you must be circumcised in order to be saved. And Paul is writing to the Galatians who evidently uh, believed and accepted these uh, emissaries from Peter, James, and John and had begun to observe and practice the uh, uh, requirements of the Mosaic law. Paul is writing to correct that uh, error in them, which he saw as an error. The reason it's relevant for us today is because mainstream Christianity in the modern day church has pretty much accepted and practices the view that Paul condemns in the book of Galatians. I really think if Paul were alive today and we asked him, Paul, what epistle of yours in the Bible is most needed, is most relevant for the modern day church, I think he would begin with the epistle to the Galatians because it addresses a rampant error in the church today, that it is important to observe and to practice things prescribed in the Old Testament. Let me begin reading in Galatians in chapter 1. Again, I don't have uh, time to comment in this format on every single verse, but if you'll go to our website, you'll find materials that will uh, give you a more thorough explanation of every, uh, all the details in every verse in this epistle. So I'm just going to hit what I think are the most important parts. Beginning in Galatians chapter 6, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says to the Galatians, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you who would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now in verse 6, Paul said, I marvel or I'm surprised that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. The word removed in this verse is a Greek word which means or is used in classical Greek uh, to refer to a turncoat or a traitor. Uh, the Weiss translation says, I'm surprised you are deserting him. It uh, refers to someone who is a traitor or a turncoat or is deserting. And then he says, you have deserted the grace of God or you're a traitor to the grace of God uh, because you've embraced what he says is another gospel which is not another. Uh, Paul uses two Greek words, two different Greek words for another. There are two words for another. The first one Paul uses is heteros, which means another of a different kind. And then the second word he uses second, which is allos, which means another of the same kind. And he says, uh, you, have, you have deserted the grace of God for another 
of the same, uh, another of a different kind, another gospel of a different kind. Then he says, which is not another of the same kind. Now, if that seems a little bit complicated to you, let me read this to you from uh, various translations and then it will become more plain. The Weiss translation said, you are deserting from him which called you into the sphere of Christ's grace to a message diametrically opposed to the gospel, which message is not a gospel of the same kind. The Amplified Translation says, I am surprised and astonished that you are so quickly turning renegade and deserting Him who invited you and called you by the grace, the unmerited favor of Christ, and that you are transferring your allegiance to a different, even an opposition gospel. Not that there could be any other genuine gospel. The Message Translation says, It is not a minor variation, you know. It is a completely other, an alien message, a no message, a lie about God. Now, let's remind ourselves, what is this message that is Paul calls a lie about God, or a no message, or an alien message, or an opposition message, or uh, a, a message diametrically opposed to the Gospel? And the message is that it's necessary to observe the Law of Moses, or to take into account or to keep the Law of Moses, as well as putting faith in Christ. Paul says that this message, or this concept, or this idea, is uh, a, a traitorous idea to the idea of grace. Uh, He goes on and says, there are some who would pervert the gospel of Christ. The word pervert in this verse is the Greek word metastrepho, which means to reverse or to change to the opposite or to turn around. The Williams translation says they would turn the good news of Christ upside down. So what Paul is saying here is the Galatians and the church today, to which this is also relevant, by embracing the law of Moses, has embraced a message which is upside down which is the opposite direction from the gospel of grace. You see, the gospel of grace is a message. The grace of God is what God does for you that you don't deserve. The law is an opposite message, and the law tells you what you're supposed to do to gain God's favor. Now, the law was in place for a limited period of time and given to a limited number of people. Uh, Paul tells us later in this book of Galatians that the law was like a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But having come to Christ, we're no longer under the schoolmaster. In other words, if we're made right with God by faith in Christ, then the law has no part in that. And then we shouldn't turn back to it for instructions on how to live because we've already been made right with God through faith in Christ. Um, Paul goes on to say in verse 8, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. Then he says it twice, as though to highlight or to emphasize this point. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. And I'll remind you that the gospel they had received was the message of Paul. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Period. And Paul says, even if an angel from heaven comes to you and preaches another message, uh, I curse him. I Let him be accursed. Now, Paul didn't really expect an angel was going to come to them and preach another message. But he was referring to those emissaries from Peter, James, and John who seemed to have the authority of the, we might say, the mother church, the home church in Jerusalem. Uh, they, they came with that authority preaching the message of observance of the law. And Paul says, look, even if an angel comes, even if people more or an angel which is more qualified than the people who came from Peter, James, and John, let me tell you what I think about it. Let him be accursed. This is very, very strong language. And uh, it's impossible to miss the fact that Paul is very disturbed. He's very upset. He's very angry. As we progress through the letter to the Galatians, it will become more and more evident and apparent why he's so upset, why he's so angry. Because Paul, uh, Paul was raised as a Jew. Well, let's just uh, skip down to something that he says here in uh, uh, verse 13. He says, You have heard of my conversation, which means manner of life, in times past in the Jews' religion, uh, how that beyond a measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and I profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Paul is saying here that, you know, I'm qualified to talk about this because I was a practitioner of the of the message that, the, that these emissaries from Peter, James, and John have come to, to bring to you about observing the law. I was the most observant person, uh, the most observant practitioner of the law. 